So before we get into the, the benefits, we need to get a little bit of background. So the topic given to us was uh, the Internet of Things. And our stimulus source, what is the Internet of Things, presented to us that the Internet of Things is described as objects that talk to each other, meaning the transmission of data between multiple devices. Well, how do fitness wearables fit into that? So fitness wearables are defined as technology to be worn throughout the day that monitors the health of a user. And as we can see here, fitness wearables monitor the health of the user and then transmit it to multiple other devices, whether that's computers, tablets, or phones. So, so fitness wearables positively impact Americans' health due to weight loss, benefits to those with chronic disease, and the value of information they provide. And here we have three of the leading uh, uh, fitness wearable brands being Fitbit, Garmin, and Misfits. Okay, so fitness wearables, how do they help with weight loss? Well, we have a long paragraph here, but the basis is that fitness wearables allow you to set caloric goals, weight goals, and then they allow you to do that from a weekly, daily, and yearly um, basis. This can motivate the, the, the person starting their weight loss journey as they see daily, you know, I have 406 calories left to eat, or, or I've already burnt 2,400 calories today, as we can see in this graph in a very simplistic way. It shows it to the reader or the user um, that is, and then that can help motivate them in the future. So how does this apply in the real world? Well, a study with 51 overweight postmenopausal women was conducted and found that those who had fitness trackers in comparison to just simple pedometers exercised 38 minutes more a week. And what does this mean? Well, we have 51 overweight postmenopausal women. Postmenopausal uh, meaning that the menstrual cycle is over, typically women over the age of 40, and then in addition to that, they're also overweight. These are women that likely have difficulty exercising and lack of motivation. And it was shown that with these fitness trackers, where they could set these micro goals and where they could um, have tips and reminders to work out to exercise, they actually worked out 38 minutes more a week. So in an extreme case, we can only imagine how this would affect the average person, the average American. And here we have an example of what that would look like on a weekly basis. You set your goal weight, you, it shows you where your starting weight is at, and over the course of the week, your progress towards that weight. This can continue to motivate you um, as you see getting closer to your goal weight. Okay, so in addition to weight loss, fitness rebels can also help those with chronic disease. So in a peer-reviewed journal by Valerie Gay, it states that the Microsoft Band includes a heart rate monitor, three-axis accelerometer, gyro, ambient light sensor, skin temperature sensor, <coughs> ultraviolet sensor, and galvanic skin response. A lot of big words here, but the basic truth is that fitness wearables provide hospital level equipment and on your wrist. And how would this apply to people with chronic disease? Well, an example would be type 2 diabetes, a very common um, uh, chronic disease in America today, something that plagues America. And how this would apply is, for example, blood sugar. Um, if you were to have a high blood sugar, your fitness wearable would, would announce this to you rather than you having to prick yourself and check regularly. So the fitness wearable allows you to stay on top of your health if you have a chronic disease in a way that wouldn't be possible otherwise greatly beneficial to Americans. So how does this apply? A study with 126 patients with type 2 diabetes was done and they were given, given fitness wearables and it was found that they actually kept up with their blood sugar better than those who did not. The reason once again would likely be due to the due to the tips it provides to you, it would tell you, oh, you're, you're too high um, on your blood pressure, you're too low, and then it would tell you, you know what, you need to eat sugars, you need to eat less sugars, and then it would, it would alliterate that to you so that you could uh, correct that. And then here we have a, a fantastic graph that shows from the age to about 60 to 79, um, prevalence of type 2 diabetes is about 17% of the overall American population. And what this shows us is that in this, in this pool of type 2 diabetes, 17% um, of Americans actually have type 2 diabetes uh, contributing to the greater pool of overall Americans. Shows us uh, uh, just the large amount of Americans that have chronic disease, and this just being one chronic disease, taking up 17% of the American population, uh, this huge benefits there to the overall. So with all things, there will be critics. So we have Dr. Oliver. Um, he had a whole article 
discussing how fitness wearables don't provide valuable information. He said that it really only shows your steps, it shows your, your, your core intake, all which can be measured manually. It's just not worth the $100, $150 price tag. And in fact, you know, we found that it measures in this, in this presentation that it measures far more than just steps or caloric intake. And as we can see here, 60% of US adults reported tracking their weight, diet, or exercise routine, 33% of US adults tracking health systems or symptoms or indicators such as blood pressure, blood sugar, or sleep patterns. All of these can be measured by fitness wearables and just to invest in a blood pressure machine, blood sugar, um, all of these things are upwards of $50 on their own and then sleep patterns, that's upward of $100 to buy devices for that, but it's all on your wrist with fitness wearables, proving that they're far more valuable than Dr. Oliver discussed. And here we have an example of by 2026, the predicted amount of units being over 7 billion and $140 billion in revenue in the fitness wearable industry, proving that people wouldn't purchase the product in this large amount if it wasn't providing for them at the price tag that it was at. So in conclusion, while improvements can be made, fitness wearables are beneficial to the American people due to weight loss, help with chronic disease, and the ease of information. Thank you. Okay, two questions for you. Don't worry about that. Uh, first question, tell me about your sources. How valid and reliable were they, and how do you know? Well, the, I believe my sources were um, you know, very valid because I, I got most of my sources from the Yale One file being scientific uh, peer-reviewed journals. And then in addition to that, I used the stimulus sources as well. So there was a, you know, a lot of credibility there and I tried to advance myself. You know, at first I had some Wikipedia in there and I decided, you know, that's not, that's not valid. I'm gonna go to the One file and look for more in-depth kind of, um, you know, uh, experiments, which I presented here and uh, things like that to establish and form arguments. What advice would you have for someone who does this in the future, a presentation like this? Yeah, of course. So a big thing is to get into the nitty gritty, the, the, the more specific things, because when you first Google benefits of fitness wearables, you're going to get a lot of helps with weight loss, you know, calorie intake, all these things. And when you really get into it, you find kind of the underlying benefits, the, the chronic disease um, and, and the, the help it has there to people like that have type 2 diabetes and can even apply to cancers and other things like that. And I recommend you know making sure you look into those more specific areas because there's a lot of information there that you wouldn't expect.